The Battle Cats is filled with a lot of interesting units. Some are meant to specialize in beating certain traits or enemies, while others can be designed for more general usage. Usually, units that specialize in dealing with specific threats tend to have a lower investment cost than units made for general usage. For example, a crowd control unit like Sanzo requires only a few cat fruit for its true form, and then 50 NP just to the Harriet Angels, and will work fine at level 30. For more generalist attackers such as Dancer, you may want to invest more levels and in NP into him, but as a result, he will be able to work on a larger variety of stages. One unit that doesn't follow this general investment curve is Maximum the Fighter, or the true form of Viking Cat. Maximum is an anti-red specialist meat shield, but when at lower levels, tends to underperform in his niche. At level 30, Maximum the Fighter has 26k HP and 1.8k DPS, with a cost of 525 and a cooldown of 3.87 seconds. At face value, these sound like pretty good stats, especially considering he has strong against red. Well, as a specialized meat shield, Maximum's main flaw comes from his KB count of 3, which decreases his endurance by quite a lot. Let's say you're using him to tank a Professor A, one of the red enemies where tanking is generally a good idea. After the Into the Future anti-red fruit, Maximum at level 30 and no stat talents has an effective 65,025 HP versus red enemies. This sounds good, but when endurance is taken into account, Maximum can only take 21,675 red damage before being knocked back. Professor A at 100% does 6,800 damage, and when put into practice, you can see that Maximum is not even capable of hitting Professor A once, unless timed well. But even if Maximum lands only a single hit on Professor A, his low damage per hit ensures that it isn't enough damage to be meaningful. Maximum suffers from just generally having underwhelming stats, as well as a KB count that doesn't fit his role. This 3KB count is shared by the Island family, but Islands are tankier units overall that can reach enemies easier, and most importantly, have better damage. While Maximum does have a numbers advantage, when it comes to tanking, a high amount of numbers won't matter if your unit can't reach the desired enemy in the first place. If a level 30 Maximum can't stand up to a 100% Professor A, it would take an undesirable amount of levels and investment to make him work against even higher magnification Professor A's, like the 200% ones in I'll Be Bug, and the even stronger ones in Star Duel, or even just red enemies in general. While he can be a decent answer to Berserkori in the early mid game, other tanker options like Row exist, which are just stronger and leaves Maximum as an inferior option overall. Looking at his talents, Immune to Slow seems intended for countering the Professor A we named before, but given his problems at reaching Professor A, this would only make sense to unlock if he is boosted. While Resist Curse, Immune to Weaken, and Resist Toxic generally don't do too much, and HP Up is your standard issue boosting talent. None of these solve his main issue, except HP Up, which is too investment heavy for the benefits it gives him. Now, when compensated with lots of plus levels, Maximum the Fighter can actually work and be very strong. Here's Seven's 4 unit 1 lineup for all of Uncanny Legends, in which he uses an absolute max level Maximum the Fighter. Clearly, this unit can do great things when at his peak potential, but getting to that point is, well, impractical. Here's another impractical unit. Beefcake Cat. Beefcake Cat serves as an alternative to Cyborg Cat, which has 11k HP and 600 DPS at level 30 before talents. For comparison, Cyborg Cat at level 30 has 9.8k HP and 1.3k DPS. As you can see, while Beefcake has slightly more HP, his DPS is less than half of Cyborg's. Luckily, 
Beefcake Hat has talents to fix these weaknesses. Standard 80% boost from attack and HP talents are nice, along with Surge Immunity for an additional niche, and a Strength and Ability that activates at one third of his max health for even more damage. Compared to Cyborg again, his HP is quite a bit higher, his DPS only a little bit lower, but becomes higher after the strengthen, and with Surge Immunity now. On paper, this sounds like it would make him a better unit, and well, well it does sometimes, there's a big flaw. Buying all of these talents for him adds up quickly, and the cost of maxing out all four of these talents totals to be 490 NP. This is quite a large amount for a unit that ends up being average even after these talents. For reference, with 490 NP, you could use this all to unlock Can Can's Double Bounty, max out Can Can's Speed Talent, max out Pizza's Wave Talent, and max out Cyberpunk's Slow Talent. Any of these, even individually, you could call more useful than all of Beefcake's talents combined. And it's not just like there are a few of these extremely good talents. There are quite frankly tons of great talents that are much more worth investing into than Beefcake. Looking at him as a niche anti-surge unit, this is useful for only a few stages, as his mediocre DPS even post-talents relegates him to really only beating the Cappy Jr. stages, and maybe a few 1-star UL stages with surge enemies, like Beyond the Haze. This really isn't worth that 490 NP, and for an additional nail in the coffin, we just recently got talents for Lil King Dragon, who not only has Surge Immunity talent, but has way better stats, a Survive talent, and a Mini Wave talent. I know that LKD has single target and needs Lucky Ticket farming to reach his peak potential, but even with no plus levels at just 40 and 50, and max talents, he's a strong choice on many stages. In scaling into late or end game, when given those plus levels straight up makes him one of the best units in the entire game. The competition is simply just too good for Beefcake to have any relevance nowadays, and he remains an impractical unit. Combining the previous two units in a similar vein, we have Bondage Cat, which is both an anti-red tanker like Maximum, and a purchasable special cat like Beefcake. Bondage suffers from similar problems that those two have. As a red tanker, it is outshined by Roe, and not worth investing in, and like Beefcake, eats up quite a lot of NP. Although it is an extremely strong red meat shield when maxed out with talents, potentially even outperforming Roe in red-only stages, it generally isn't worth getting when Roe takes less investment and works better on mixed stages. Even when it comes to restriction stages, you're better off going for another unit like Dark Laser, who has more general usage than Bondage Cat does. A lot of other special cat talents can also be seen as impractical, so I think I'm gonna stop talking about them now. For something different, Metafilibuster proves to be a pretty mediocre option at the point of the game he is unlocked. Before his true form, Filibuster is a pretty bad option that can freeze traitless enemies, but due to a long attack animation, low uptime, and just bad survivability, he just isn't worth setting up into. Filibuster's true form takes one yellow behemoth gem, two red behemoth gems, and five epic stones. In true form, he has immunity to curse and surges, 575 range, and freezes traitless and relics for 4 seconds, with a 14.87 second attack cycle. This sounds like good support, and while it can be pretty decent at times, his KB count of 1 and low HP holds him back from being too useful on more stages. Now, he could potentially be useful on stages like Beyond the Haze 1 star, where he can freeze Emos in a surge immune to not die from condemned pangs, but here's the thing. You can only get Filibuster's true form after clearing a whole new world, which comes after UL. By the time you do that, you can, for a fraction of the evolution materials that Meta Filibuster needs, get Awakened Nala, which not only cleans up beyond the haze in any star UL, but works on a lot, lot more stages. Of course, you still can get Meta Filibuster, 
but a lot of the stages he would be good on would already get shut down by Nala or other replaceable units. So realistically, you would be better off spending those 10 yellow stones on other units. Especially given that Ponos adds more and more egg units every single update. Metafilibuster could have been a solid option to use if he was available earlier, but based on where he is from progression, ends up being rather impractical, and more of just a collector's item. Our last unit today may be one that is not entirely impractical, but rather just impractical to most players. Super Feline is the final normal cat in the game, unlocked from Silver Capsules after clearing Cats of the Cosmos Chapter 3. Unlike any other normal cat, Super Feline starts with a level cap of 20 plus 9, which increases starting from when you reach 10,001 user rank all the way to 15,001 user rank, by which then you reach the cap of a 20 plus 80 Super Feline and can then get its true form. Looking at his pre-true form stats, they are a bit lacking, but do get better with more plus levels. His true form gives him an HP buff, damage buff, and Colossus Slayer, but most importantly, changes him to be a full backswing rebound unit, which prevents him from rushing in without an attack ready to defend himself. A level 20 plus 80 Super Feline is actually one of the strongest units in the game, both at killing relic enemies, and even just as a rusher. On stages like Cosmic Juggernaut Max, he can survive a hit from Super Hippo and deal big chunks of damage to both the boss, and clean up the peons very well. Honestly, if he wasn't so hard to unlock, more people would realize that he's an incredibly strong unit. As stated earlier though, you need 15,001 user rank to allow Super Feline to reach this point, and 10,001 user rank to even start boosting him up. Being an anti-relic, Super Feline's best usage would be in the Uncanny Legends, but most players aren't even close to 15,000 user rank upon clearing the Uncanny Legends. Even some players who push really slowly by today's standards still tend to have around 10,000 user rank at most when they finish UL, and while that is enough to start upgrading Super Feline, they are still 5,000 user rank away from getting his true form, which is where he really shines. This essentially relegates him to be used exclusively for clearing star UL, but even then it can be hard to reach that 15,000 user rank needed for his true form. User rank is a mechanic that is increased by upgrading units, and becomes harder to increase the higher it gets. Because upgrading more units already means that more are closer or already at their maximum level, this makes obtaining 15,000 user rank very difficult, and basically requires a whole lot of dedicated grinding to reach it. Now. As seen in some strategies, you don't need true Super Feline for him to be viable. Super Felines with only some boost, say at the plus 40 to plus 50 level, is still a decent choice for clearing out relic peons like Surrells and relic doges in Star UL, but even then, there are still alternatives that do the job just as good, if not better, than an unmaxed Super Feline. True Super Feline just won't be a practical option in most players' runs throughout the game, and serves as a post-game collector's unit to most people. However, for the few people who play with the intent of already grinding user rank, or have been former grinders in the past that just started playing again, True Super Feline might actually not be impractical. We all move across battle cats at different speeds. Whether finishing most of the game in months, or years, there are definitely people with that 15,000 user rank that have some UL left over to clear. And at that point, after obtaining the dupes necessary, True Super Feline is still a really good unit anyways, far from being useless at all. So in the end, while not an optimal choice for most, with Battle Cat's open progression path and varying clearing speeds, some players can turn the impractical into practical. Thanks for watching.